If you've been here for a while, you might know that this setup for my table usually means that we are in for a exciting time today. Hello everyone and welcome to this week's video. Previously on my channel I made a video which was uh, maybe slightly controversial um, about mixing with black watercolour. So I'd highly recommend if you check that out because there's a lot of discourse surrounding the usage of black and white watercolour paints um, in the community. You know a lot of classical watercolour uh, techniques really would emphasise that you know, you should try and mix your own dark colours uh, and not use black watercolours where you can. That's not the topic for this video, um, but I really enjoyed all the discussions that we had in the comments section of that video. And so as a kind of a follow up, I thought maybe we could do some mixing with white watercolours today. So this is another experiment. I've never done these mixes before and I'm looking forward to finding out just as much as you are. Um, but what I often see is that people uh, have told me, this is my personal experience, I'm, and again, I'm interested in hearing your experiences in the comments below, uh, that you maybe should not use white watercolour when you're mixing. Like when you get like a standard beginner watercolour set, quite often they come with a black and a white and people say, man, I wish they didn't come with a white because you should use the white of the paper as your white, right? To take advantage of the transparency of the watercolour and let the light shine through to the paper to get that effect of a lighter colour. Uh, but I know a lot of people do enjoy using pastel colours. Pastel colours are uh, made quite a big hit in the last couple of years, especially the brand uh, Holbein produces a lot of pastel watercolours and they quite often contain this pigment. This is titanium white uh, PW6, just standard white pigment. Um, but in complement to this, I quite often see professional watercolour artists, which is not what I am for the record, I'm just a hobbyist and we are here to do maybe a little bit of myth busting together, that they do use uh, titanium buff. So that's this colour here, buff titanium, which is also PW6. So um, I have heard that this makes nice soft pastels and this has also been my experience for the record. So I think that we should take this out of my, this is my ultimate watercolour palette, by the way. Uh, there's a video about this one as well. But today I'm going to remove it so we can have all these colours conveniently located on my mixing, uh, in my mixing space. But one thing that I am very curious about is that this colour here is titanium grey or um, uh, Aquarius Grey, as this version is called, because it's from the brand Roman Schmoll, and the uh, line is called Aquarius Watercolours. And this is also the same pigment, just with a varying... Um, so this titanium white pigment, PW6, it comes in a range of tones, basically, with uh, depending on the inclusion of various other elements uh, in, the, in the pigment mixture. So that's right, these three pigments are all... Uh, different versions of exactly the same pigment, the same chemical structure, this titanium white. And I thought maybe it would be fun to do a video making mixes with all three of these to compare the results and see what, uh, yeah, just see what results we get, really. Um, ignore this one. This is my little blob of uh, nickel titanate yellow that lives on my, lives on my palette from a, a video long ago. I don't want to waste it, so I leave it there. Um, but we will be mixing with these three colours today, and I'll be mixing with a couple of primaries and then maybe with a couple of fun colours if we have time. So if you're excited about this video then do uh, give it a thumbs up and let me know if you enjoy mixing uh, any of your colours with uh, pastel mixes like these and let's get straight into it. So for my supplies today I have my trusty Da Vinci Spin Synthetics number one quill brush, I use this all the time and I'm using this uh, Claire Fontaine Goldline Aqua paper, just a super affordable paper, just to see what the mixes are like. Um, and I'm going to be mixing with these three Roman Schmoll paints and then also some other paints from my collection and I'll let you know which ones I choose as I go because I'm not sure I've even decided yet. So I'm going to mix uh, one colour with all three of these and then I'll give you a close up and we can compare the results. So I think I'm going to start with some primary colours and I think I'm going to start with this Permanent Alizarin Crimson, which is here in my ultimate palette. So this is PR176. 
and if you're not familiar with pigment numbers or you don't care then that's absolutely fine I understand <laughs> but if you're interested then this uh the, that, that stands for pigment red and then 176 is just the identifier for for that pigment so I'm going to put like a little bit three uh, little puddles of this uh permanent alizarin crimson on my on my palette my mixing palette this is a very sort of uh, cool red, a little bit on the pink side, and I have really uh, a really good experience mixing this colour. Not much of a pink person, so I guess we'll see how these mixes turn out. So even just, there was a little bit left on my brush, so I already saw a little bit. So you can see this titanium white is truly like a very, very, very white, uh, <laughs> like bright white pigment. So it produces this really creamy, look I've got some on my hand, I'm such a messy artist really creamy baby pink kind of colour. Very appropriate for uh, <laughs> the current Barbie uh, season in which we're living. And I'll just put a little bit of it. So maybe I'll do three swatches along and I'll try and make them nice and even and we can give them a bit of a, a dilution as we go. This is really cool. Look what this is doing in my water cup. My dirty, dirty water cup, but if I just... Wow. I love watching that. So in case you do too, there's a little treat. But I'll just put a little bit more water on my brush so I can drag this out and we can see what sort of range we get of tones. And that is a really pretty pink. I mean, you know, I already said I'm not much of a pink person, but can't deny that that is a lovely shade. So next up on the mixing palette is going to be the Buff Titanium. So all these mixes are going to be opaque because these white uh, pigments, these titanium pigments are all very opaque. Um, so yeah, if you're looking for transparent mixes, then this video is uh, not the one for you. But I think that more and more I've been seeing people exploring opaque mixes. Uh, and I'm just as intrigued as everyone else. I'm going to try and make them so they're roughly the same value. So you can already see... This mixture is a lot warmer, a lot more peachy, um, and just generally a bit more muted than this sort of true bright pastel pink that I have here. So let's just see what it looks like on the paper. I mean, I, you'd expect it, right? Because the titanium buff uh, is a little bit yellower in the in its mass tone than the very, very pure white that almost mimics what you would get from mixing or just diluting the original colour, this uh, permanent leather and crimson. But this is a lovely like vintage rose shade right there. My swatches might be a little bit wonky today. Um, I've just decided I think I'm going to embrace that. Uh, <laughs> so sorry if that annoys you, but I'd encourage you also to experiment with these mixes, uh, you know, on your own. And then finally, we have the titanium grey or Aquarius grey. I'm expecting that these will be quite dark because the shade is quite dark but when we water it out maybe we'll see a slightly different tone of pastel oh wow I don't even know what I'd call that that's more like a muted uh, violet almost like a violet gray that's been a recurring theme lately in my color mixing adventures is finding this violet gray shade so it's definitely closer to the titanium buff mixture than the titanium white mixture. But I think when we wash it out, very interesting. I'm not sure what you'd use that colour for. Like, what's that colour? Some kinds of rocks? Very interesting. Also, this is a granulating, uh, granulating colour. Well, they, the titanium buff and the grey titanium are both granulating colours you can sort of see them separating on my palette actually just drop in a little bit more of this and then maybe I'll just put like a I've still got this on my finger I haven't cleaned it off maybe I'll put a little bit of a a strip of the pure um permanent alizarin crimson at the top so we can see what it looks like by itself so this is like a representation of what you get if you just make a pastel version of the colour just using water and not adding any white. So we'll see what these look like when they're fully dry. I'll give you a close up. 
But so far I'm feeling very optimistic about this. These are all lovely mixes. For my next mix, I think I'm going to choose a yellow colour. And I think I'm going to choose this uh, Nickel Azo Yellow, which is one of my favourite yellows to use as like a, a primary yellow shade. It's very, it looks brown in the pan, but you can see when I add water. And then when you look at it on the palette, it becomes this sort of luminous sunflower yellow that I absolutely adore. Not sure how this is going to mix with the grey, to be honest, um, but we'll see. We'll see how that goes. Dust on my paper. So let's go through the same thing. Let's start by adding this uh, titanium white. Just a lot of this. Titanium, uh, this is titanium dioxide, uh, this pigment, by the way. And it's the same uh, chemical they use in uh, sunscreen, <laughs> I think. So that's the little factoid for today. So this is a wonderful primrosey yellow. I really love a pastel yellow, as you can tell. This colour is not, not miles apart from that. So let's swatch this out. Yeah. Wow. And I think this colour is quite different to what you would get if you just uh, diluted the Nicolazo yellow because it's so luminous and this uh, white pigment sort of binds it a little bit and really ties it to that sort of pastel tone which is quite different to what you would uh, what you'd get otherwise interested to see how it compares so let's start with the titan titanium buff <laughs> losing my words if uh, anybody here was here for my last video you'll remember i was quite sick i'm still a little bit sick but we're uh, we're powering through so this is a sort of a more muted pastel yellow don't know what to compare this to just yet but yeah it's sort of more of a dirty a dirty pastel yellow i think this might be accurate to colors that you see on some wild birds maybe when they have like a yellow color on them some some of them obviously are very bright, but um, often the ones we get here in uh, in Europe are a little bit more on the muted side, uh, generally speaking. And so we'll see. I think there's also a little bit of interesting granulation going on with the buff titanium and the titanium grey from the permanent leather and crimson. So I'm hoping that we'll see the same separation here. And then for the mix, which I'm most apprehensive about, the mixture with this. Uh, <laughs> Grey titanium, oh goodness. It's, um, I don't know. I'm reserving judgment, I'm reserving judgment. Usually when you mix yellow with, with black or with grey, you get some kind of a strange uh, green colour, like a dirty green colour. I'm not really sure how to read this colour just yet. On the camera it looks more olivey green than it does in person, so maybe I'll... I guess I can kind of see it as a muted yellow green color. Mm. I don't know. I'm not sure. Not sure how I feel. <laughs> maybe, maybe, uh, maybe this is like this would be really lovely in complement to a bright color. I expect like to really set off a bright pink or something. Then this would maybe be nice. Or like as a on for like sun on stones or something since this um both the permanent laser and crimson and the nickel laser yellow are very transparent pigments i expect that we'll see very interesting uh separation if there is granulation which i think that there is spoilers and then finally uh to top out the primary uh triad oh wait i'll put a little bit of the so i'll put a bit of the yellow just along the bottom here can see how vibrant this is. My water's getting a bit mucky. Might have to change it out soon. So I'll just make sure I run this into like a super pastel shade so that we can get an actual representation. In the end, I think there's a place for all of the elements of this sort of theory, by the way. I'm not trying to say that everybody should mix with white instead of uh, just diluting their paint and using the white of the paper, because that is of course, one of the unique beauties of uh, of watercolour as compared to other media. So I love doing that too, but I just wanted to experiment and see what I was missing, you know. And then finally, for our primary triad, if you like, I'm going to use this 
phthalo blue red shade. I prefer a red shade to a green shade because I prefer warmer blues. So this is still quite a, it's a very vivid blue, Mix, very, mixes very nice greens and also very nice violets, which is very versatile. But we're gonna find out what it mixes with, uh, what it mixes with white. So let's see what pastel blues we can get. Mixing the titanium white. It's a very, very strong color, this blue. So I'm expecting uh, a little resistance when it comes to making it a pastel tone. These are so pretty. I'm not really much of a pastel kind of uh, person, but I can appreciate that this would be a lovely sky color, for example. Just dilute it out so we can see a little bit better, especially with the strong phthalo. I'm interested to see what it's going to mix with the slightly dirtier colours since it's such a pure, strong colour by itself. So let's try that right now. A bit of the buff titanium. Hmm, is that enough buff titanium? Maybe I'm learning also that with the buff titanium and the Aquarius Grey, I need a little bit more of them to mix with the pigment than the just the plain white to get like an actual pastel colour. So this is sort of like a muted sea blue that we got with the buff titanium, like more on the green side, which makes sense because of the yellow shade to the buff titanium. That's gonna be lovely, I think. Definitely nice. I mean, this reminds me of the video which I did, which was a deep dive uh, into the color that I was calling a uh, sea foam. If you watch that video, highly recommend it. It was a great, uh, great time had by all. <laughs> I do plan on doing more color deep dives in the future. They just take a little bit of time to set up, but this is also a lovely, yeah, sea green, like almost like a cobalt turquoise kind of color. So let's see what muted uh, shades we get with the gray. Cause the gray, the titanium uh, gray, the Aquarius gray is also, um, a little bit on the warm side, so it's a bit of a warmer grey. I think I might have actually overpowered my blue. <laughs> oh, that's lovely. Oh, it's like a smoky blue. That's one of my favourite shades of blue. We'll see how it separates, because I, I deliberately chose my most uh, transparent staining pigments for this mixture, so we'd see truly the characteristics of the paints. So that looks absolutely lovely. That's like a a springtime cloudy sky kind of colour. A little bit on the green side still because of the warmth of that grey, but not to a point where I don't think it would read as blue in a painting. That's lovely. Very nice. I love these mixes. More than I thought I would, actually. Not that I didn't think I'd like them, but just put a little strip of this. Phthalo colours are a little bit scary, to be honest, because they're so, they're so strongly tinting, they really take over a mix, usually. So we'll just put a nice little strip of this. always find it interesting, I hadn't done any other painting today, you can see my brush control improves just by going through the swatching uh, process. My, this strip was a little bit dodgy, and then this one feels a lot more controlled. And look at these mixes on the on the palette. Wow, what a lovely collection. So I'm gonna clean off my palette and uh, grab some clean water and then I'll be back to do a couple more mixes because we've still got some space on this paper. Okay, clean palette, clean water. And I think I'm going to mix a green and a purple because I think that this video, I was mostly interested in mixing colors that a lot of people will know and understand very well so that they can see the effect of the specific mixtures with the different uh, white uh, pigments, rather than coming up with like new and exciting uh, mixes necessarily, because uh, I think that will be clearer then. So in my overflow palette, I don't have a problem. I can stop whenever I want. I definitely still have some paints on a wish list. Look, there's space in here still, you know? I'm gonna take my phthalo green, the most one of the most common 
green pigments probably and it's also like the phthalo blue very very strong but i think i was mixing with this in my as uh, in my seafoam video to try and get sort of the pale colors i've got like my swatching book with all my color mixtures in it and i was trying out some of these to see what we would get and that is like a that's a perfect mint green uh do i love it this might not be my favourite, but I do appreciate how clean and beautiful it is. And I know a lot of people who really do love this colour. It's just a big bit much for me. But it's like, all, what I'm noticing with the, uh, I've got a little bit of cauliflowering in the blue, that's also a peril with phthalo pigments specifically. But in the white mixes, they're very, very smooth, whereas with the... Uh, buff titanium and the uh, Aquarius grey we see a little bit more texture a little bit more variation and maybe that's also more interesting or maybe that's not what you want at all maybe you wanted a smooth consistent color this is why it's important to do experiments <laughs> so let's mix the green with this buff titanium that looks quite nice let's just use that one so it's a little bit more, it's turned the phthalo green a little bit more to the yellow side of the spectrum. And it looks sort of more of a watery green than a mint green. Like a, like a herbal kind of green, I guess. Um, if that makes any sense at all. I, would be, I wouldn't be surprised if I'm not making much sense right now. I've had like a very busy... A week, but this is this is a very fun uh, way to spend an afternoon. I hope you guys are enjoying these mixes too. Let's see what it looks like with the grey. Like what happens when you mix grey and green? Beautiful things usually. One of my favourite colours is uh, sage green, which I think mixes uh, is kind of a mixture of grey and green. So let's give that a go. Perhaps a little bit darker than the others, but we'll see how it dries because you never know with watercolour. You can see my mix is blending a little tiny bit and separating on the palette in a really interesting way. There was a little bit of water at the top of the palette um, from where I rinsed it off in between mixes. But this is a really nice sage green. I don't often use phthalo green, that's why it's not in my main palette because I find it a bit much, but this is a lovely mixture. I'm very interested to see how this dries. So then maybe we have space for one more mixture on the bottom. And I think if I was going to go with the traditional route, then I would go with a dioxazine violet, I think. And I think that's exactly what I will do. I will go with my Roman Schmoll also, dioxazine violet. So this is a Roman Schmoll only video. Uh, Roman Schmoll's uh, dioxazine violet is a little bit different. Most uh, brands use PV... 23 for their dioxazine violet and Roman Schmoll uses PV37 but it's very much the same shade this very blue purple also transparent so I think that we'll also see any potential separation very nicely and I tend to prefer uh, either warm plum purple or sort of a muted lavender kind of color so we'll see if we get any nice muted lavenders with these mixes Starting with the titanium white. Oh, that's lovely. Really love that colour. That's like a true lilac, like the flower. Or a very springtime colour, like a springtime crocus. We're in the very midst of summer right now. We've had some horrible weather, but the sun has come out and I am rejoicing in it. Looks like summer is back on the menu, which is very nice. That's a, that's a really pretty colour. I think a lot of people really love that colour. So next I will mix with the buff titanium, which might be interesting because I think it will neutralise the purple a little bit since yellow and purple are complementary colours. So yeah, this definitely looks a little bit more of a sandy mauve, <laughs> if that makes any sense at all. It's hard to, it's hard to describe colours, isn't it? But that's a lovely colour, very natural. Reminds me a little bit of the uh, 
a laser in crimson with the titanium grey, except more on the violet side, of course. I like that colour a lot. That's also like a very vintage-y, like a very vintage colour. And then our final mix, our final mix of the day. Always a sad moment. I'm going to be mixing the titanium grey with the dioxazine violet. And let's see if we can get a nice muted lavender. So I guess, um, so the Roman Schmoll Aquarius Grey is obviously not the only version of titanium grey on the market. I know that Daniel Smith has one. I don't know what the properties of theirs are because these pigments are often varying in granulation level and hue between brands. So you'd have to try it out for yourself. But hopefully this can give you a little bit of an idea of what to expect if you try and mix with these colours. So this is a lovely range of, uh, a lovely range of pastel shades. I'm very uh, intrigued to see what they'll look like when they dry. Uh, so I'm going to let these dry, clean off my palette, and come back and give you a close-up of uh, all of these lovely mixes. Okay, so we're back and the colours are all dry now. So one thing that I'll say that I notice about the pattern overall is that this titanium white uh, column here, the mixes are all quite smooth in the sense that you get some cauliflowering where I added too much water and this is just cellulose paper. So it doesn't take water so amazingly, you get much smoother mixes on 100% uh, cotton paper. But I do find that there's not any separation between the white and the regular pigment. So if you just wanted like a lighter version of the colour of your choosing, then I guess that the just using the plain white is a good way to go. So then it comes down to comparing the uh, buff titanium with the grey titanium. And um, what we see here is that both of these colours are granulating, but the Aquarius grey that I used uh, is very, very granulating, more so than the buff titanium, though the buff titanium also does separate. Um, but the most distinct difference, I think, is that the grey titanium makes obviously darker mixes, uh, more muted mixes, and slightly less warm in colour as well, a little bit cooler. Um, so when we look at the permanent laser in crimson, for example, you can see where the paint was a bit thicker. Some of this buff titanium has settled into the texture of the paper, but it makes this lovely peachy tone when you wash it out. Um, and then the same with the grey titanium, though there's still a little bit more of this granulation, which I think is making a really beautiful texture in this sort of dusky rose colour. And a similar thing for the yellow, except I think that the granulation from the buff titanium is, buff titanium <laughs> is less visible with the Nicolazo yellow because it's so yellow to begin with, uh, whereas the grey granulation like really uh, shows up. And I think that, that those two colours are quite interesting uh, mixes, though maybe not the most interesting on the sheet. Um, with the blue, I think it's very interesting. When this was wet, it looked a lot more uniform and therefore a lot more greenish. So maybe if you used a little bit less water or, like I said, on cotton paper, you wouldn't get this edge uh, where all the blue pi pigment has collected and maybe you'd see a little bit more of the greenish original mixture. But it is very interesting the way that the um, buff titanium has separated into the texture of the paper. So that's like really good to know. And the same with the grey here. I've got a lot of variety in the texture, but I feel like maybe I used a little bit too much uh, water or this isn't the best paper for this mixture. So that's another thing that when you're experimenting with mixtures and watercolour, you always need to consider the um, other factors like the brush you're using, the amount of water you're using in the paper. These minty green colours are absolutely fantastic. I love them all, uh, actually. Um, they're a little bit cooler on camera. They look a little bit more green in person, as usual, but... This uh, mixture with the buff titanium and the thalo green makes a really interesting minty colour, actually. Um, I, I really quite like that, that mixture. Uh, I liked the original sage green that mixed with the grey as well, but when with the pigment separating out like this, I don't know if I love it quite so much. Um, but I still like them all. But I think that the real showstoppers of these mixtures was the purple. I mean, this is a, the most amazing uh, lavender lilac colour, really pure, clean with the white. And I think that you wouldn't get the same effect with just the pigment uh, drawn out because it has this sort of smoothness and opacity uh, that it wouldn't have otherwise. 
especially because of the dioxazine violet tendency to cauliflower. But these two are absolutely amazing. I really, really love both of these mixtures with the grey and with the uh, titanium buff, both a sort of warmer, almost brownish, muted mauve colour, and then this sort of um, mid-tone, neutral, purple colour. I really, really love this. I accidentally put my finger in this one, so that was user error. But I think that overall, these colours are really, really nice, and I'm so glad I did this experiment. So thank you for coming along on this journey with me. If you made it to this point in the video, please consider subscribing. I have so many more colour mixing videos uh, to share with you and we can go on uh, so many more adventures uh, together. And with that, I'll see you all in the next video. Thank you so much for watching and bye everyone.